Sab goes live with instant USD payments for corporates using Ripple technology. And as always, I do not care what Twitter handle Bob4269 says about XRP and says it's bad. I'm focusing on the macro and focusing on real partnerships, billions in funding, and growth year over year. What is going on, guys? Kevin Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. We're going to be diving into some XRP rapid fire news. As we can see, XRP has the integrations mentioned again by Goldman Sachs in their blockchain report just last month, listed next to Circle, a firm that I believe goes public, and Coinbase. Now, also, just to touch on this, please recall back in 2020, Ripple, the company, was valued at $10 billion. And yes, I'd imagine they're much higher today. Of course, the price of XRP is a little higher than 2020 as well. And now Coinbase, they were at $8 billion. What happened when they did one of the largest IPOs in history? From $8 billion, they went to approximately $86 billion, one of the largest IPOs in history. So if this was a 10x multiplier effect, where do you think that Ripple could be going if they decide to go public in the years ahead? Would it be from 10 billion to 100 billion? And this actually aligns perfectly with the video we did yesterday discussing Ripple, the $250 billion company. Powerful stuff. This was actually shared on New York Times if you guys wanted to verify. Along with this, so this is a Forbes report back in 2020 naming some of the largest crypto companies. So Ripple, 10 billion, Coinbase, 8 billion, Robinhood, almost 8 billion. I'm sure it's much larger now. Today, the market cap of Robinhood is at even $19 billion. So hopefully I'm making sense on why I believe that Ripple, the company, will continue to be a multi-billion dollar decacorn. Now, of course, this is a decacorn, not a unicorn. Instead of $1 billion, they're already at a $10 billion valuation years ago, and they've had more customers than ever before. And of course, now we're doing proof of concepts and trials with a variety of central banks. So now touching on this shared by Bank XRP, the opportunity in payments. Now circle. With USDC, their stablecoin that I trust far more than just Tether or USDT, they already have integrations with Hedera, with HBAR, Algorand, with Algo, Stellar Foundation, with XLM. I would not bet against these organizations. So Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are becoming an increasingly popular payments option among many companies. Now, I think Ethereum is going to be a beast in the future. It's not going anywhere, but the gas fees are a concern. So... Of course, people are going to be choosing the cheaper currencies, whether it be XRP, XLM, Algo, or HBAR. We are talking one one thousandth of a penny to send something rather than 40 bucks or even a couple of hundred dollars in gas fees. No thanks. This was also one of the best videos I've ever seen done, of course, surprise, surprise, by Matt Hamilton of Ripple, a masterclass in payments and blockchain. Bank XRP did, in fact, upload this. Highly recommend it. It's one hour long going through everything. If you don't understand RippleNet, if you don't understand the use case, you may get nervous when you're holding during these volatile price swings. If you do your research, you should know what you own. You shouldn't be worried about it. You should see dips as an opportunity. And yes, I know it's no fun waiting. Imagine for those that were in XRP for, you know, five years instead of just three or four. Also want to highlight, pay attention to crypto assets that have offices in Switzerland. We know that even XRP has regulatory clarity there, offices there. We know Alliance Block. We know Casper. There are tons of them out in Switzerland. Pay very close attention. And thank you for sharing this. The top 50 blockchain and crypto companies in Switzerland and Liechtenstein. And you can see a list right here. So we have Icon. We have Nexo. Cardano. Definity. Tezos, Waves, Santiment, Cosmos, Casper Labs, Polkadot, and Taurus. Remember, there's some deep ties to XRP that I believe uh, King Solomon found in the past. Next up, XRP, the most hated, yet they are still building for the future. We can see we're continuing to engage with central banks globally on technical and policy issues related to central bank digital currencies. In case you missed it, one such project includes supporting the design and implementation of a digital pound in the United Kingdom with the Digital Pound Foundation. Now, XRP, or Ripple, is just one of the organizations involved, along with Quant and Electronium and Avalanche, AVAX. I know the price isn't fun, but I just cannot bet against assets long term when I'm looking at these types of moves. Next up, guys, Bitstamp. The Songbird airdrop has been completed. You should now see the balances available in your accounts. And I hope this is also for um, US investors as well. Otherwise, I'm going to be pissed. Also, to touch on Casper, proud to be the first blockchain protocol joining as a member of the Swiss Blockchain Federation. The Swiss Blockchain Federation has announced Casper Network as their latest member. And please focus on the Switzerland groups. As we know, market is still in extreme fear. 
And this is what I was really excited to touch on that we're gonna keep going into some XRP news. As we can see, there are only 3.9%, let's say 4% of the entire global population owns cryptocurrency. I've seen hours of videos, I've seen hours of pitch decks just emphasizing that this number will climb to 10%, 15%, even 25% in the coming years. There are billions of unbanked people or underbanked populations. They're getting mobile wallets. So even if they don't have a brick and mortar bank near them to have a bank account, well, guess what? They have e-money or electronic money. And the crypto market is growing at a rate of two times faster than the internet did. So I know just a while back we are talking about 200 million users. Well, now we're at 300 million users. And that number will go to 1 billion. Remember, not everybody had an email. Not everybody had a Twitter or even a Facebook or even a smartphone at first. It was gradual. And now looking back, we think it happened fast. The average is about 4% of 300 million crypto users. 18,000 businesses accept crypto. Now, I don't care if they accept crypto. That's a great to lower the barrier to entry. We want them to be actually using these networks, building on these protocols and building dApps. And if you think 4% is high, I don't at all. Let's give some comparisons because I believe this number will grow exponentially. Perspective, 22% of the world's population uses Facebook. 35% of the world's population has a smartphone today. Globally, 31% of adults are unbanked. Now, if they're unbanked, they're going to be searching for other ways to have value or send value, even if it's peer-to-peer -peer or using mobile applications. And 69% are banked. The 69% of the population will absolutely be leveraging crypto. And this 31% will be closely behind, if not even more inclined to use it today. Crypto, 4%. We're going to see other verticals as well, even outside of crypto, at these low numbers under 5%, under 6%, and climb up to 10 and 20% as well. Now consider that crypto will actually be powering the very applications that we use on a daily basis. This is not just the internet of value. This is Web3, the internet of everything. So projections, overall show, 300 million users quickly becomes 1 billion plus, and I think that's still conservative. That's a lot of crypto wallets. We know that every single wallet requires a specific reserve amount of XRP as well. So could you imagine going from 3 million XRP wallets to 500 million? And now, not even just individual accounts. Most of us have many accounts on a variety of exchanges. I probably have 20 different XRP accounts, 20 plus, but some might have very little on it. But that still needs a small reserve amount of XRP to be locked up for that wallet to be active. Now, besides humans, let's think Internet of Things, IoT, cars, smart fridge, anything in between that could be connected to the network. Now, the metaverse and any emerging use case that comes out of this, the microverses, in-game items, um, KYC demands, you name it. And then also big data and storage, whether it's you know cloud computing or holding the quintillions of bytes of data that are produced annually. And then NFTs, non-fungible tokens, they will have utility. They're going to be a certification and really digitize everything, whether it's car titles, whether it's a birth certificate, whether it's uh, an authentic art piece, anything. This is going to be so much bigger, I can't even comprehend it. That's why I'm just kind of focusing on the macro trajectory of this growth of this market. Also, good news, we have Nexo announcing they're going to be having Songbird coming shortly. Cannot wait. So thank you, Nexo, one of my favorite platforms out there. And yes, they are legitimate. Also, took a poll. So are you in profit? I know sentiment is lower than ever, and I get that. It's no fun seeing unrealized gains then becoming even further unrealized and never taking profit when we could have. But now this is something also very interesting. Are you in profit? We have over 2,000 votes right here. Now, are you in profit, whether a big profit or a small profit, since investing into cryptocurrency? 75% of the 2,000 votes said yes. 17% said no, and there's about 8% that said they broke even. Now, this number will flip and change in the months ahead. And then when the bear market does come, because I still believe we have a blow off top per the altcoins, and that's why I'm holding, I believe that this number will change a lot as well in the bear market because a lot of people will still be afraid to take profit, worried about it going higher. But if you're making 2x, 5x, 10x, I'm getting my initial investment out at the very least. 
And I, I know that this 75% is probably people that have been here for three or four years, um, unless you know somebody's new within six months and they rode some nice waves. But those that stick in the market, continue to dollar cost average, are not selling at mega losses, remain profitable provided that you are actually investing in utility long term. Also, X underscore Anderson, I remember him referencing this before, I think. So Arthur Brito, the founder of the XRP Ledger, discussed micro payments on a forum, or was it an email, back in 2013. Don't think that 1 billion XRP, yep, they granted 1 billion XRP, like 1% of the total supply to Coil. Stephen Thomas, his baby, remember that the founder of Ethereum was sleeping on that guy's couch early on. Now, Coil, not a coincidence. Micropayments have been part of the vision for a long time. Even David Schwartz said that it could take over the world. The use case of micropayments can be so much bigger. Imagine streaming per video, or let's say instead of a Netflix subscription of $15 a month, if you're only watching three episodes of something per month, maybe you only pay 30 cents. So it's in real time in internet of value with micropayments, just paying in real time fractions of a dollar basically pay as you go. Imagine if you had a smart car you're driving and you only pay instead of 100 bucks or 300 bucks for car insurance. If you only drive a little bit, maybe you're only going to be paying 10 bucks a month based off of actual utility. And then there's going to be a lot more capital efficiency. So yeah, bottom line, micropayments will be a game changer. And now if you don't think so, well, imagine micropayments that will still be a thing in the metaverse. And of course, the NFT craze has gotten much bigger. Last year, it was DeFi. Overall, I'm just beyond excited. There's going to be even more emerging use cases that I never thought possible, and they're going to be continuing to grow. Also, Fidelity and Nexo partner to offer crypto lending products to institutional investors. They are interested. The Alliance will create an institutional platform to onboard traditional finance companies into crypto. TradeFi is coming. So yes, you already know they have their attention on crypto. They're going to be figuring out ways to make the most money and extract the most value from this as possible. But I hope this is going to be a good thing to grow the market year over year. Buying pressure, the more liquidity, the better. The more staking when assets are locked up, the more participation in DAOs, you name it. Also, Jack McDonald of Standard Custody and PolySign, side by side with Arthur Brito and David Schwartz, really Arthur, the creator of the XRP Ledger. So if you guys don't think that Standard Custody has vested interest to leverage XRP for the trillions of dollars in capital markets in the future, I don't know what to tell you. So the first NFT ETF offers further exposure into the booming crypto and blockchain sector, Finance Yahoo. Now, this is massive. I saw everybody talking about this yesterday. The venture fund Ripple Investor SBI Holdings, the owner shareholder of Ripple and R3, formed with Cigna, Think Switzerland, and Azimut has made its first investment into Coin Heco or Heco. I'm not sure how to say that. The leading crypto exchange in Singapore, SBI also invested directly. Now, this Coin Heco originally mentioned as XRP gateway for the Singapore dollar, the Indonesian rupiah, and VND is the Vietnamese dong. And then even bigger, right here, Crypto Eddy, R3 and Ripple are expected to serve as the core technology. Or now remember, SBI Holdings was the previous investor right there with Signum, Cough Cough, Switzerland. And now we have this technology for SBI Liquidity Hub in Asia. Now, what's big about this is one of the biggest groups. This is B2C2. They are one of the largest liquidity providers in the world. I know there was some crazy news last year about them, and it just keeps coming. So Ripple Investor, SBI, and six. And funny enough, six, this is a Switzerland Swiss exchange. So we're talking a lot about Switzerland today and deep ties with Ripple and SBI. And remember, the Monetary Authority of Singapore has regulatory clarity for XRP. They said it is not a security. So guess what? They don't care what the US does. They're going to be leveraging XRP regardless. And then the Swiss exchange, SDX. So a trading and settlement service for digital assets in Europe with a focus on Switzerland. So this plan right now, guys, as we can see right here, operations in Singapore next year with the goal of launching active offerings no later than 2022. R3 and Ripple are expected to serve as the core technology. Not the backup, the core technology. So can you say XRP Ledger? And maybe even the Ripple Liquidity Hub. Because now they are forming this liquidity hub for institutional investors and digital assets in Singapore. 
As David Schwartz goes on to say, I have almost the entire skill set needed to have been Satoshi Nakamoto. It is certainly plausible that I was part of a group, but nevertheless, it's not true. I didn't find out about Bitcoin until 2011, despite working for the NSA early on. And he did also say in the past, if he was Satoshi Nakamoto, he would not tell anybody. Now, I go on to say certainly you, Arthur Brito, or Jed McCaleb could know who Satoshi is. And yeah, I do obviously believe that Arthur Brito is involved with Satoshi Nakamoto. If not, maybe he is, in fact, him. And Satoshi, by the way, is the creator of Bitcoin for anybody new, whether it's an anonymous person or group. And here's a daily reminder. The SEC, they are sworn to protect retail investors. Maybe on paper. Us everyday people? Nope. They protect their puppet masters. Governments, they do not protect people. They control them. So now we have a bunch happening with, you know, Singapore shared by Rath Kahneman with this XRP gateway for a variety of currencies, Indonesia and Vietnam. And we also have that Ripple liquidity hub. And now we have another liquidity hub with R3 and Ripple serving as core technology with SIX or SDX, the Swiss digital exchange. So Switzerland and Singapore. Crazy. Saw Casper Labs over in Puerto Rico. Awesome. With this uh, PR blockchain week. Also want to touch on this. So we have Rath Economist SABB's or SAB's use of Ripple made the Arab news November 30th. They mentioned SABB is the first Saudi bank to use it and the expansion in the US dollar corridor makes it the third after use with the Indian rupee. I always mix up the currency. So Indian rupee and Indonesia rupiah and then Sri Lankan rupee. Very cool. As you can see, SAB goes live with instant USD payments for corporates using Ripple technology. And as you can see right here, real-time US dollar settlement for corporate clients. And as always, I do not care what Twitter handle Bob4269 says about XRP and says it's bad. I'm focusing on the macro and focusing on real partnerships, billions in funding, and growth year over year. Also, Mbiagi, thank you for the tags. We have Finextra right here. Company announcement, State Street, one of the largest custodians custodying approximately one-fourth of the world's wealth. We can see Vanguard. I think you guys know them. They have their hand in everybody's cookie jar, just like Goldman Sachs. And Symbionts. They complete a live trade for foreign exchange forward contracts using blockchain. Now, this just occurred. And what Mbiagi is sharing is down here. Remember Symbiont? Well, PR Newswire, Symbiont creates a Ripple gateway. And this is back in 2015. And yes, this is old integrations. I just wanted to share. I know the Ripple Gateway terminology is not relevant now. So Symbiont creates Ripple Gateway for counterparty XCP. XCP, counterparty's native currency or any other counterparty asset may be sent. By being a member of the Ripple Network, FYI, yes, Symbiont is a member of Ripple. And don't be surprised if State Street is also involved. We already know that Standard Custody has BNY Mellon Vice Chairman who's retired now, and he right there was one-fourth of the world's wealth with PolySign. He's on. He's next to David Schwartz and Arthur Brito, and then two or three other people. So uh, yeah, I'd assume that XRP and the XRP ledger will be involved in the future. Now check this out. Mr. Bedick's Ripple partner, Unimoney, or Unimoney, and Canada's Buxy partner for US dollar payments. Canada, I remember Royal Bank of Canada is a Ripple partner from years ago and still active. Canada is the only country that can send and receive funds for the US via ACH. Who's the backbone of the ACH network? NACHA. Who joined the NACHA alliance? Ripple. So it seems like ODL can reach the US via Canada. We have this gentleman talking about transaction fees. Bitcoin, $2. Ethereum, $42. Matic, $0.01. Cent. BNB, $0.50. Cent. Solana, $0.01. Cent. ADA, $0.40. Cents. AVAX, $0.10. Cents. All these projects are continuing to be developed and improved upon, but I love Anderzell. Now do XRP, XTC, and XLM. Notice, nobody wants to include XRP. It's the most hated for a reason. And I see that as bullish. Next up, Bloomberg notes Ripple's entry into the NFT world via the Creators Fund. That was a $250 million fund that Ripple is putting towards creators for the XRP ledger. So uh, yeah, some projects are just white papers. We have 250 million, a quarter billion dollars being invested to improve that. And then remember HBAR or Hedera has that other $5 billion grants going on. So I just wouldn't bet against these guys. It's going to be global domination. Next up, good news. An article penned by Ripple partner Bex's B-E-X-S, Banco. Brazil adopted new regulations opening up FX transactions and standardizing them. Ripple was meeting with the Central Bank of Brazil last year. So yeah, even right here, uh, Ripple famously met with the Brazilian government. They'll allow payment accounts directly connected to settlement of FX transactions. Interesting. All about open banking. 
Just remember, QNT Quant was stuck under this level for 500 plus days from the previous high, was just stuck in this level. And then what happened? Probably shook people out and then erupted thousands of percent. So holders, they were considered moon boys or idiots, just like always. But those that never did the research missed out on QNT. Or at least the first big parabolic rise. XRP Crow, total value locked on Songbird, $47 million. Beautiful. A $17 million increase since last week. So great to see all this participation. Also wanted to highlight this. Bank XRP Payments Company. We have Pay Porter EN right here. Domestic and International Money Transfer and Ripple form a new strategic partnership to expand our technology network. So you can see just a quick little uh, media announcement. Oh, and also Jordan Free, just to cover HBAR, in case you didn't know, there's $250 million worth of USDC in circulation on Hedera's network powered by HBAR. And yes, I believe that this number will go to $1 billion plus in the future. Crypto, you are better off being a year too early than a day too late. Also, in the video description of every YouTube video I do, I have all of the crypto resources and exchanges I use on a daily basis down below. And until next time.